What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake and in today's video we've got yet another GPU mineable coin launching and it has already shown up on hashrate.no and I've seen some people asking about it so I thought we would go over it in detail but before we do, if you would, hit that like and if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so by the end of the video. So. I've known about this coin for a little over a week and I have mined a little bit of it but there was a couple of things that I was waiting on before I covered it on the channel uh, but hashrate.no beat me to the punch by adding it to their website and as soon as they did it was actually in the top I would say maybe three to four maybe five top profitable coins to mine for a few days now the prices dropped back significantly but uh, yeah, I think that this may be something worth taking a look at for profitability in the future because there's something a little different about the max supply on this particular coin that is a little bit intriguing. They do have a website. It claims that it was fair launched with no pre-mine, no ICO. It's open source, decentralized, anonymous, secure, and instant. And then we have a little bit of a roadmap here. It is currently on mining pool stats and once again does not show up in the new mineable coins. So mining pool stats, I don't know what's up with that. You guys always list stuff that's been around forever and I don't really see anything intriguing in those lists typically. You have to do a little bit of digging to find something and even though there are a lot of different pool options here, uh, it's not very evenly distributed at the moment. The majority of it is going to impool, and as you can see, the difficulty has skyrocketed here recently, and the price has also had some significant moves. So less than a week ago, the price was about thirty-seven dollars, and then it pumped all the way up to about a hundred and ten, and it is kind of retracing. We're currently sitting at about fifty bucks. And let me just kind of go over some of the tokenomics with you. But before we do, just so you're aware, um, there is a little bit of liquidity, not a whole lot out there. Safe Trade showing about 36,000 in volume, TechSpit showing about 35,000, and I believe it's pronounced Zegex. There we go. I always forget how to pronounce that one. But. Yeah, you can see the chart here. Um, I've heard some good things about this particular exchange. I don't believe it has KYC, and I think there's like a $2,000 a day limit. But they do have a Bitcoin talk page as well. And I did get some information from the dev to share with you guys. So I'm just going to read some of the replies he had to my questions. So there was zero pre-mine in it and no ICO at all. Uh, he says that they announced it on Bitcoin talk right away. He leaves the link to the original Bitcoin Talk and says that it was changed shortly after the Bitcoin Talk admins weren't doing a great job at moderating. And he says, unlike any other project, Kyla Coin, instead of eight decimals, has 12 decimals, so the lowest value can be as low as point eleven zeros with a one. The initial block reward is point zero zero five. But since version 1.2.0, 10% .2 of it goes to the dev. Now, there isn't some type of governance. There isn't VC vesting, anything like that, as far as I can tell on this particular coin. And it has a max supply of 21,000 coins. And yes, you heard that correct. 21,000, not 21 million, not 21 trillion. But 21,000, which is interesting. And I would assume to account for the lack of coins, adding a few extra, extra decimal places um, kind of keeps things in line when it comes to how small of a transaction you can send and what liquidity looks like on the exchanges. However, I don't know if many traders are going to be aware that they can go that far down in the decimal places so you know only having 21,000 coins on a max supply there's not many out there that are like that and I think that this could potentially create some type of you know large swings whether that's to the upside or to the downside 
but I guess time will tell. I think uh, I think we've seen a pretty significant pump in price recently. I don't know how far we're going to retrace, but definitely worth paying attention to. And he also says that KyloCoin is capable of processing 100, tra 100 transactions per second, which is not much, but it's unique in the fact that it guarantees all transactions get confirmed. This is done by copying the memory pool to all the nodes. Uh, it is a layer one blockchain. Um, it is powerful script language, which makes any smart contract can be built on top of it. So they're planning to host tokens on the chain for the next year. Kyla is a proof of work only coin and uses hash 3D algorithm, which is the most standard and safe hashing algorithm. Kyla coin is the only active project with this algo right now. And the daily emissions on the coin is 7.2. Currently there are only about 3000 coins in circulation. He says, I have developed the desktop wallet for now, but will be developing mobile wallets in this next year. So, yeah, just nothing stands out. So nothing too out of the ordinary other than the 21,000 coins. Um, I do like the fact that it's not a VC coin. Um, it, it's kind of a grassroots project and for that reason I've kind of paid a little bit of attention to it still trying to learn more about it but you guys can join the discord if you like I'll leave a link for that down in the description below but let's go ahead and take a look at HiveOS and see how I've got some of these flight sheets set up what minor options we have and uh, when it comes to the wallet by the way the only wallet at the moment is a desktop wallet and you can find that if you go to downloads here and you can download it for Windows, Linux, or you can have the source code. Now, I do not recommend downloading this to your daily driver PC. I personally install all of these on a virtual machine. So if you guys aren't aware how to create your own virtual machine, uh, I do have a video for that. I'll leave a link to that down in the description below as well. And here's a look at the wallet on my virtual machine. As you can see, um, looks just like most desktop wallets nothing particularly fancy about it you can see I've got a very small amount from some of the testing that I've been doing let's go ahead and take a look at Hive OS here so I've got two rigs on it at the moment uh, one of which is Naboo the other is Tatooine Naboo consists of some 3080s 3070s and a 3080 Ti and currently the overclocks that I'm running right now is 300 on the core offset, 1500 on the locked core and memory locked at 810. Now I've just got those settings on every card with the exception of my 40 series. And we're getting some pretty decent efficiency using BZ Miner. Now BZ Miner just released his beta version for this earlier today. And I'm sure that there will be a release available on HiveOS pretty soon but in the meantime if you guys want to get ahead of the game uh, you could just simply go to BZ Miners GitHub uh, but if you're looking for the command to install it then I'll leave a link to this down in the description below I'll also copy and paste this into the comments sometimes YouTube doesn't do a great job of uh, making sure that you get the entire syntax that you need there but I did have a little bit of trouble installing it. Um, just something that I want you guys to be aware of in case you run into this. So when installing a beta version of BZ Miner, um, actually let's go over the flight sheet details real quickly and we'll get back to that. So of course I had to create the coin. Uh, HiveOS doesn't have it at this very moment, but depending on when you watch it, they probably will. The time of recording is May 6th. Um, 2023 so we've got the desktop wallet selected the pool we've got configure and miner and then BZ miner is the miner and then our config looks like this so we've got radiant selected as the algorithm you're going to paste your entire wallet address here um, I'm not certain but I don't believe that using the wallet template 
works. I think you need to paste the whole thing in here while you're doing it as a beta version. Then of course you've got your worker name. Now as far as the pool and the stratum is concerned here, um, Viper is in pre-production right now at the time of recording. However, when you watch this video, it will most likely have a permanent port and a different stratum than what you're seeing here. So please refer back to viper.net and uh, they should have this listed on their website here pretty soon. And as far as the extra configs here, one thing that you have to do if you're installing the beta version is you do need to use the extra config arc force algo kyla coin. And then of course I always keep my overclocks within the extra argument configs. So nothing too fancy about getting this going, but the issue that I had was if you're selecting the latest as opposed to a specific version, occasionally, and I'm not sure why, it won't select the most recent version. Um, on one rig it did, but on the other rig it was still on 14.3.0 instead of 14.3.1. And for that reason, whenever I went into the hive shell and pasted the command, it would default and give an error message that said it couldn't find 14.3.1 in the directory. So just in case you run into that, um, make sure that you're on 14.3.1 because that's what it's trying to uninstall and replace with the beta. So as far as hash rates are concerned on the 40 series, I've only got a 4070 at the moment, at it, but as you can see, we're getting 888 mega hash at 95 watts, which is pretty good. And as far as the overclock that I'm using for that specifically, I'll let you take a look at this flight sheet because it is a little bit different for the 40 series GPUs. So I'm using 320 on the core offset and 2695 on the locked core. So just a little bit different than what you're probably used to seeing. Now I do have some 20 series cards but I haven't updated uh, to the beta version. I'll probably wait until it's available in HiveOS. And couple of other things to be aware of. Let me just show you the difference in hash rates between BZ minor and CC minor. So these are recorded back to back with the exact same overclocks, but you can see a 3060 Ti is getting just under 400 mega hash at 56 watts versus 400 and roughly 408 mega hash at 54 watts. So a little bit more mega hash, a little less wattage, on a 3070, we went from 478 to 493, and we dropped one watt. And then on the 4070, we increased significantly, uh, roughly about 45 mega hash, and we dropped eight watts. That, that's pretty good. And then for a 3080, we increased roughly about 27 mega hash, dropped about five watts. And on a 3070 Ti, we gained about 15 mega hash and we dropped about 3 watts. So BZ Miner with its beta release is definitely a little bit more efficient than CC Miner. Of course, the only way to truly know which one performs better is to test on a pool with static difficulty and see how many shares we're getting. But in software, BZ Miner definitely the better miner at the moment. And last thing. You know, when, when it comes to installing this um, core wallet here, again, please use a virtual machine. Uh, make sure that you don't install anything on your personal computer to where there's access to your personal information. Um, again, if you need help installing a virtual machine, I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. Anyways, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoy the content. And please remember to refer back to Viper.net if you plan on using them for the correct stratum and port. Um, but yeah, that's it. Appreciate you guys watching. I'll catch you on the next one.